Rahmanir Raheem Atiyullah, Atiyah Rasul wa ulul amri minkum and always a reminder for myself and abdukullah jisa da'ifu, miskinu, zalimu, jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. Alhamdulillah for this holy month Rabbi Athani and the opening of Surat Al Yaseen and the immensity of the lights of Surat Al Yaseen dressing this holy month and the events that are happening in our lives. And alhamdulillah <coughs> Allah wrote this program <coughs> and teaches us that write the last chapter of your life it sets the whole course of your entire path. I was repeating for myself until one day I can get it and understand. The last chapter <coughs> gives the taste and the whole reality of what my entire path in life will be. What is it I want in the end? how I want to die, how I want to be remembered, what condition do I want to pass in this life, do I want to pass in full sunnah where I don't want to make an accident, <coughs> meet my Lord and meet the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad not in sunnah and not in his holy way, <coughs> not in a condition to be happy with all of these issues we address in our last chapter and say, no because my death could come at any moment. We look on the news and anywhere in the world something can happen and your last chapter is right there. If all your life you prepared for it, worked for it means everything you did from now was to reach that last chapter then you should be successful in life especially if that chapter was based on what Allah wants from Atiyullah, Atiyya Rasul Ulul Amri Minkum that what we tried our best to obey Allah which that obedience is secret is in the obedience of Sayyidina Muhammad <coughs> And the best adherence to that way and to that reality was to find these Ulul Amr these people of Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Authority in which their deeds and actions match that reality. And by following them and accompanying them and being with them, it takes us to the obedience of Sayyidina Muhammad Because we live our life as if we're around Prophet How we eat, how we drink, how we conduct ourselves, how we act, how we keep our adab is exactly that manner and that fashion. So it's not something strange the way that we kept our adab with the tariqah, with the shaykhs as if we were in the presence of Prophet And <coughs> we remember that in our seclusions the way that we were eating with Mawlana Shaykh and interacting with Mawlana Shaykh that in our seclusions we were introduced to the presence of Prophet and it was as if exactly the same. The same mannerisms, the same type of uh, familiarity as if my whole life had prepared me for that. It wasn't something strange, it wasn't something I had to act a different way. I was trained on how acting exactly the perfected way at all times. 
the way we conduct ourselves, the tone of my voice, the tone of my character, the mannerisms and humility that was trained upon me for that audience, everything came natural. And that's the barakah of tariqah, that's the purposes of tariqah is all your life you have to train for a day that Allah will open that presence inshaAllah. You don't do every type of wildness hoping one day that will open because then it will never open. You don't take a gorilla into the presence of the king of the universes but you take an insan, you take somebody from the crown kingdom whom through all their protocol teachings and and mannerisms and cleanliness and, and good deeds and good actions and good character is a welcoming audience. Even the mannerisms in which they ate and conducted himself in, in a meal was exactly like I was sitting in the presence of Mawlana Shaykh. And it was, a, it was an astonishing experience but as a reminder for ourselves that this is the immensity of this way and this reality and this love. That we build our love from now, we, we keep the mannerisms of that love now so that Allah finds us to be ready and at any moment unveils the servant even for just a moment to be in the presence of the one whom is always vigilant over his nation and never leaves them to be alone. This is the immensity of, of that blessing and the purpose of this way and its teachings. And Allah as He wants for us, Prophet wants for us to write our last chapter, review it every day and think, am I living every day to achieve this last chapter? Because I don't know when this last chapter comes. It's not 30 years away, it's not 20 years away, it could be just one day away. So are we living for that? Prophet then becomes and teaches to us, Allah did that for us. As Allah asks for us, Allah has given to us that same reality, means that Allah prepared us for the last days because the chapter of the last days has already been written. And many things in our lives we may not appreciate until we approach that last chapter. One in our days now as we hear people speak, the opinions of people speak and we said the, the, the greatest test is a lemon test. Everybody can claim to be sweet, everybody claims that they're sweet and they're great, they're good, their belief is the correct belief and what we call the lemon test in which Allah squeezes you. And when He squeezes you, it should be sweet if that's what you claimed you are. So then you see through hardship and difficulty the real flavor of people. When they speak it's nothing to do with sweetness. When they speak it's nothing to do with kindness. When they speak it's nothing to do with mercy. So they failed the lemon test. Because they inspired years ago <coughs> that black and white would be clear because everything good, everybody's grey. You don't really know who's sweet and who's sour. But they taught and we taught to the people, oh no, black and white will become very clear, the grey will disappear. And as we approach days of hardship we see the grey vanishing, the white becomes more clear and the black becomes ever more clear and the grey disappears. 
and those whom claim the sweetness and righteousness and correctness, every truth will show its reality. They become angered and violent and no mercy within their hearts and all that they spoke through their tongues were lies. And that's when Allah gives us back from Qur'an, if what their tongue is lying, imagine the darkness within their heart that becomes the black. Because when it's grey people can't really determine and it's best not to judge people. But when the person speaks and has actions that no longer require judging, the action is self-evidence. You know in a court of law you only judge when you're trying to guess what the facts are. But when your own action shows the condition of your heart and shows the condition of your belief that becomes the clear white and black. When difficulty befalls a believer they should draw near to Allah for the kingdom is coming and their home is where they belong, not here but hereafter. Our home is not here, our home is in the hereafter. In their heart they rejoice that the proximity to their Lord, to their Creator and all whom they love is knocking on their door. So distress and difficulty draws a believer towards his Lord and the whiteness of his light means the rightness and correctness of their belief begins to show. And when difficulty comes and anger and vigilance or vigilantism and, and evilness and every horrific characteristic comes, it shows who their Lord is and that Lord is shaitan. Because nobody whom worships Allah becomes like that because they not drawing near to Allah with that character. But it becomes clear who is their Lord on this earth. We said before in the month before, Lordship is not their who's their creator because Allah is creator of all of them. That's why it was important to distinguish Rabb. Allah is the Rabb of all creation but what we want to understand who is their authority? Who is it that they bow down to and give their allegiance to? If it's Rabbi al-A'la, the Lord Supreme, their character and khuluq must be perfected. But if it's a party of shaitan then their character will exhibit its own realities of negativity, darkness, anger, dispousing every type of hatred, every type of satanic character as if you got the tail of shaitan and squeezed it. And all you can hear is the howling, yelling and screaming of a devil inside and insan. But that shouldn't be from Ahlul Rahman. And that becomes then what we are seeing. We see the oceans of creation moving into their corners. People should sit back and meditate and contemplate that people becoming more darkened. And luminous bodies and luminous souls that have been training they should become illuminated more, drawing near to their Lord for the kingdom of my Lord is coming down. 
Make sure that your character is correct, your love is correct, whom you associate with is correct, your actions are correct. Don't live a life of falsehood, deceit and deception. And that becomes then the immensity of this world of light coming. Said so many will come, many will go. Those whom believe nothing is lost in the way of Allah Our whole life's purpose was to enter onto this earth to return back to Allah with a purified and beatific soul. Death in the way of Allah is the highest level of perfection on the soul. Nothing is wasted in Allah's way. Anything that perishes in the way of Allah has achieved a momentous achievement and the only purpose of coming to this earth was to achieve that. So they graduated with honours. And at the same time because of their honours and the, the degree in which Allah is blessing their soul, they give their allegiance to the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi We said before, if the Promised One whom is coming and the majority of people don't have the physicality and the purity of their physicality to serve with their body, then events will come that take the body away. This is in the plans of Allah This is in the secret of that contract. Why? Because shuhada they now can serve with immense power. They are now souls with medallions from Allah's Divine the Presence, 10,000 in one area, 20,000 in another. These are all soldiers of paradise. 10,000 another area, all in the lands of Islam. Why? Because they are all entering into the armies of Sayyidina Mahdi It's every event that is happening upon this earth, Allah has made the best of plans. How people think that they can serve an immense reality but their physicality not entering into any training or any understanding or any reality or any capacity to hold that reality, then the nation would have been lost. But alhamdulillah for Allah's love for Sayyidina Muhammad that He granted, no, your nation when they perish through calamities, through wars, through difficulties. I will make them to be from shuhada. And the station and reality and the power of these shuhada are immense. Their souls are Hayyu al Qayyum, and all they want is to serve Allah. The moment of grief, grief on this earth are only for the people left on this earth, there's no grief for them. The grief are for those whom left as the residual of people upon this earth but for those whom are passing. They achieved a momentous arrival in Divinely Presence, an immense station in Divinely Presence. Whatever shaitan plans to do he actually is Planning and Allah's plan significantly more powerful. We described before he's at now a dilemma, should he take them on in their physicality or think that if he kills them he got rid of them but they come back a thousand times more powerful. Because this game is rigged in Allah's favour. It's in the favour of Sayyidina Muhammad means then these are 
immense days opening upon the earth. And for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi salam, immense lights, immense realities that the souls will come in droves in, in immense uh, oceans of reality, they will be coming to the reality of Sayyidina Mahdi salam through the spiritual realm and malakut. And they lend their service and they lend their faith and their ibadah for the inhabitants of this earth. And as this deception of grey dissipates and begins to leave, what Allah left for us for the last days so that the world would know the immensity of Islam and the immense beauty of Islam that Allah gave for us is, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. When anyone wants to know because the world becomes merciless, there's no more mercy. Hear how they speak and how they talk and everyone talks as if they're talking for God and Allah says, No, my only true religion on this earth is in the name of Allah most compassionate. most merciful. Allah gave us the key, so don't let them fool you and don't let them try to school you. I gave to you a key in the beginning of everything you say, remember me as in the name of God most compassionate and most merciful. That my compassion outdoes my wrath, don't let anybody talk about the heavens as if it's devoid of compassion and mercy. But everything we do we say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem as a reminder for ourselves in our battle, in our fights, in our daily struggle, in our families, in our eating and in our dying, everything is Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. How can a nation that continuously reminded in the name of God most compassionate and most merciful, they cannot kill with atrocity, they cannot harm with atrocities, they cannot torture with atrocities, they can do none of these actions if they want to represent Lord of the heavens and the earths. And He gave to His nation the most favoured nation, this is your entire key. It's not something you repeat once maybe hidden in a verse of a book but in every action you do you must say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Anything that you partake in you must ask yourself, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, is this in the name of Allah most compassionate and most merciful. This is the nation of light, the nation of mercy and compassion. We live in a day of deception. We don't have nothing to do with antichrist, people whom are confused and ignorant people. The Prophet gave to us every solid key of reality, that which you will be fighting for the nation of Islam is a dajjal. And that's deception, not antichrist because we already accepted Sayyidina Isa and we're waiting for his second coming to fight along with us. Our battle is in deception. So real Islam is Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, 
fake Islam, non-Islam and Hizb shaitan they're not from that. Their actions are not from that. Their talk is not from that. Their character is not from Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So in last days you see what? Deception. So Dajjal is what? Before you think he's coming with horns, he's the party of deception. His media industry is located where? And it's based on magic and deception. Make your eyes think they saw something but that's not what they saw. Make your ears think you heard something but that's not what you heard. Even make the lips of things to say something and that's not what those lips said. This is Dajjal. Before he comes with a broken eye we said he's going to come as a beautified person of religious faith for them. Hiding behind the deception of his deception, he's a deception, <laughs> he's going to be the king of all magic. If people are not understanding our battle is against deception. They said, oh these people of ISIS and Daesh, look what they did, they were not Muslims, they were the other people. Because you hear their aqidah now, these other lamps, they can kill how they want, they can destroy how they want, they can kill and destroy and do anything they want and they feel that it's allowed for them. This is their belief and this is what they made of Islam and that had nothing to do with Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. You cannot burn anybody Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. You cannot drown anybody with Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. It's a nation based on compassion and mercy. Those whom show no compassion on this earth for even the creatures of Allah the significant and insignificant creatures, there are none, none that are insignificant. If they cannot show mercy on this earth, they will be shown no mercy in the hereafter, means to be entitled to the Raheem of Allah and the Rahmah of paradises and the world of light, you should have lived a life of compassion upon the earth. It's the key to the compassion within the heavens. If your life was compassionate towards Allah's creation, caretakers for Allah's creation, Regardless of their faith, their belief, their size, their height, their wealth and their poverty and all of Allah's creatures and animals. And Allah said, this is my nation whom I gave my mercy and sent Sayyidina Muhammad upon them to govern and to rule over them and taught them that I am the most compassionate and most merciful. And that my mercy outdoes my wrath. So then everything else is deception. People will see people come out and they'll say they're Muslims but no, based on deception they're Dajjalis. Because Dajjal loves to dress as other people, he doesn't like to do things in his own image because of the ugliness of his image. Is deception, is what you expect from a magic show. If tomorrow they say there's the king of all magicians at this auditorium, if you go are you expecting not to be fooled? No, this is why Prophet warned to us, you will be fooled. So, but I saw this, it's a deception. But they said that, it's a deception. Because it's not in our belief, it's not even in the first words that we say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. 
They made these devils, they named these parties and these devils, they did all of these things because they are the king of magicians and magic. The battle for the believer is to open their heart to dispel the magic of their illusions that they cast upon the eyes of people, the ears of people, the minds of people. So that they no longer can even understand what they see, what they hear, what they thought somebody said. The magic show has started. And this life is about staying strongly connected to those whom their hearts are open. And that the illumination that comes within them is internal and not external. If you rely on somebody who needs to see the light to guide you, then what happens when they turn off the lights in the house? You and him will be blind. But when we follow those whom they don't need the illumination of the outer world because their hearts are illuminated into the heavenly realm and through their illumination they see through all the spells and mischief and deceit and they see clearly the magic and the puppet masters whom are performing their magic, as if their suits can't be seen by those whom their hearts are open. Everybody else who uses their external eyes they say, we don't see what you see, what you're talking about. But those whom hearts are open they say, look this guy is a puppet for something else and we can see the one behind him moving him. This is the danger that opens upon the earth and to remember for ourselves is that magic and deceit is our enemy. And the only way to counter that difficulty is through opening one's heart into the world of light so that the deception and the truth become clear. That which is deceiving is understood and the heart has a light which understands clearly its coordinates. We pray that Allah give us a greater understanding and an opening into the realities of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Everything beautific and uh, merciful and compassionate and to take that path to open up the compassion of the malakut and the heavens. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.